Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything. I'm coming back at you with a Wargaming and Miniature video. Now, this uh, tutorial is Painting 101, and it's a step-by-step -step process from the very beginning of, of getting the model, cleaning it, washing all the mold release off in video one. In video two, we prepared our models, cut them off the sprues, uh, prepared them for assembly, organized them, got all of our materials in place, and then in video three, we actually assembled all the models. And now in video four here, what we're going to do is we're going to prime them. But this is going to be a two-part video, uh, a today video and then a tomorrow, tomorrow video. Now, the tutorial, what we're doing is we're using the French line from Warlord Games as our uh, guinea pigs. Preparing for priming, what we're going to do is some people you'll notice they will take like a medicine bottle or med medicine like a pill case or something like that and they will put, um, here I'll just pull this thing over, they'll get something like this and then they'll put some tacky on here and then they'll take their model and they'll stick it on the tacky, right? And then they'll have one model based and they'll prime it and they'll paint it and you will get nowhere by doing that. Um, you will have an excellently painted single model. Uh, if it's a champion or hero or some kind of you know monster or something like that that you want to paint, that's great. But when it comes to armies or mass production, you cannot do that. Uh, so what I do is I get these popsicle sticks. Okay, this is a popsicle stick. As you can see, it's been used before. I black primed some figures using these. I've used them multiple times. Um, what you do is you put a, some Elmer's or white or PVA glue as a drop, and then you'll put your model on there. And then once you get all the models dried, then we go into the priming step. Uh, but right now, um, I want you to know that I organize each of these popsicle sticks into my bases. I have four figures per base and there will be four figures per popsicle stick. And then that way when I'm going through and I'm painting them, they'll all have a, uh, a familiar look to them because they will all have been painted at the same time. Okay, so before I do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely put all the metals, that's the command stand, that was pretty much easy to, easy to figure out. The command stand is going to go on one popsicle stick, okay? And then I will take my voltigeers and my on one stick, my grenadiers on another stick, and then the the remainder of my line infantry will be the other three companies, and they will be on the other three sticks. Okay, so let's just do one uh, popsicle stick. So you just get the idea. Um, I'm using PVA uh, or Elmer School Glue. And I'm putting them equidistant apart. Okay. So you notice I just put the four little drops there. And then what I do is I put the figures on there. And it's okay if it goes over a little bit. You actually want it to, it'll hold it steady. Okay. I've got my. Commander, uh, he's the uh, what do you call it? The aide. There's a word for it, um, where he actually uh, protects the uh, standard bear. And then I put the standard bear on there. Hmm. Okay simple enough. Now I let that sit off to the side. I'm going to let it dry. I'm actually going to let it dry overnight. And then we'll actually do the priming tomorrow. Um, okay, so now because the rest are all plastic and I need to figure out which ones are which, uh, once I do that I'll be right back. All right, now that I've got my troops organized into the Voltigeers, Grenadiers, three line companies, I'm just going to go ahead and start adding glue to the bases and start plopping them down. Uh, and once I get done with that, I'll be right back. Okay, so as you can see, I went ahead and 
uh, glued them all to their bases. Uh, now this is just a thin or just a drop of Elmer's. So what will happen is once I'm actually done priming and finish painting these completely, then I'll just pop them off the base. The Elmer's glue will allow it to pop off. And if they don't pop off easily, then I can just use a little X-Acto knife and cut them off because uh, they should come off pretty easily. All right, so what I'm going to do is let these guys dry overnight, and then we'll come back uh, tomorrow to prime. Okay, there's one thing I guess I could talk to you now while we're waiting. Okay, you have to understand the color of your models. Okay, something you need to know about your models. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use this as an example. You probably can't see that very well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it up a little bit closer. Um, looking at this, looking at whoa, okay, the autofocus. Looking at the colors, right, and the fact that uh, the French Napoleonic Army had a lot of white in their uniform. There's also black boots and black shakos uh, or bearskins or whatever. Uh, priming black might not be the appropriate way to go with this. I think I'm going to prime white. What, Mr. Everything, you're gonna prime white? I never heard of you doing that. Well, it's true. Uh, I, I prime dark colors usually with black. So like in World War II or uh, any kind of like monsters or D&D, I will always prime black because the black can be used for shadowing. Uh, but I'm gonna prime white on these guys and then go back in and color all the non-white items. And I'm gonna use the white primer as the white paint. I'm not gonna paint over the white primer basically. I will wash it and I will uh, dry brush and I will highlight using a highlighter so we will get the shadowing manually and not artificially with the black primer. Uh, now the, the issue with metallic weapons are the uh, metallic colors don't want to stick to white. So what I will do is I will paint all those black and then go in later with the metallics. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty much going to be a straight up prime white. Now what priming white will do to your colors, you'll have to understand that priming white will make your colors brighter, right? So what I might do is use darker colors than I normally would do to bring the colors down. Uh, now there's another technique you can use whenever you prime white, and that is you can thin your paint, uh, which I always do anyway, but you can thin your paint more than normal, and then what will happen is it will artificially shade for you. So the pigment will go into the cracks, like the blue jackets, right? The pigments will go into the jacket, and the white underneath, the white base coat, will shine through in the raised areas, giving you a highlighted look. You see the white highlights? Now, if I have to, I can always touch it up and go back and fix it. But uh, what I'm gonna do now is let, it, let these guys dry overnight, and I think I'm gonna prime white tomorrow. Uh, now, there is the mid-ground, I'm sorry, I keep, I keep wanting to add a little bit extra. There is a mid-ground where you prime gray. So you don't actually prime white or you don't prime black. The problem with that is, in my opinion, is you don't get the advantage of the black shading that you can take advantage of, and you don't get the advantage of the white undercoat. You basically get neither. So I, don't, I usually don't prime gray. All right, uh, let me close this down, and I will continue this video tomorrow, but you'll think it's just a continuation of this video. All right, guys, welcome back. This is another day. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to continue on priming. Uh, as promised, I've decided to go ahead and prime white. What we're going to use is Krylon Color Master Primer. It's actually a primer, and it's white. It does bond to wood, plastic, metal, and more. Uh, it says it dries in about 10 minutes. We'll see. Uh, what I'm going to do is um, shake this up. Uh, you want to shake this up for a couple of minutes. Now, I'm doing this outside because you want, you want to do this in a well-ventilated area. You don't want to do this 
in uh, indoors or if you do it indoors make sure you have fans blowing uh, to suck all the paint fumes out of the room because they can be harmful to your brain activity okay um, now as you know I mounted the oops, we'll, we'll get back to shaking this in a minute uh, what I did was I went ahead and I hope I got hopefully I'm getting this all on camera because the lighting out here is not exactly the best uh, I didn't bring any of my studio lighting out here uh, and I've been stalling doing this portion because it has been so cold out but tonight it's actually a really comfortable night out okay as you can tell I got my popsicle sticks I got my figures glued on popsicle sticks uh, and now I've got this hard uh, MDF board that I'm going to use as my spraying platform. I put the figures on there and I kind of, uh, what do you call it, zigzag pattern or alternating pattern so that when I'm spraying, I can hit every figure with a spray and that's what I'm gonna do. Um, when you spray, you wanna make sure you get light coats. And what I do is I, personally what I do is I spray one side, then I turn it 90 degrees I spray another side, I turn it 90 degrees, spray another side, turn it 90 degrees, and spray another side, and then I let that dry for a few minutes uh, outside, and when it gets, when I think it's dry, 10, 15 minutes or whatever, then I'll come out and I'll do a second coat. Uh, now when I also, when I spray it, I'm going to hold it up, and I'm going to try to spray in an upward angle from the spray can, so that the prime actually sprays up into the figure and that way it's not uh, I mean so we'll get in the underarms and under the pants and under the legs and stuff like that uh, and you're not don't expect to get a 100% coating that's not important uh, you just want to make sure well you can get a 100% coating but don't don't concern yourself with getting 100% coating just because you don't want to over spray or cake the paint onto the model when you do that what happens is it gets down into the uh, mold lines and the creases of the model and it ruins the model basically it eliminates all the details and you don't want to do that so let me go ahead shake that up for a couple of minutes and then I'll be right back and we'll start the spray priming all right now as I start to shake this up you can hear the ball uh, moving around inside uh, you that's when you start your timer. You don't start your timer when you start shaking it. You start the one or two minutes after you start hearing the ball moving around. What that ball bearing is doing is it's moving around inside the paint, mixing it up. It's causing it, it's basic, because your paint will settle inside and you'll get nothing but spray at the top. So by shaking it and uh, by allowing this ball to move around, what it's doing is the paint and the aerosol or whatever it is that sprays the spray is mixing up and that's what you want you want a complete 100 percent mix now i bought this can gun you can see right here i bought this can gun uh, at walmart i bought it for like two bucks something like that and what it does is it fits on top of your spray cans uh it has an open front like this and that you have your cans all have like this lip that this can fit on snaps on you want to line the spray nozzle with the gun right and now you've got a handle to hold your spray can and when you pull the trigger it sprays I love the spray gun ever since I've started getting this uh, can gun uh, my spraying has been a lot more smooth it's been a lot more even um, and it doesn't get all over my fingers because you know when you're spraying the can it gets all over your fingers well now it won't have to do it. I'm going to shake this up a couple of minutes and I'll be right back all right I'm back um, I'm poised to spray now something that I personally don't like is when it's extremely windy outside and I'm spraying I'm I don't get a 100% or I, um, I feel like some of my primer is wasted and flies off in the in the wind but when uh, it's no breeze out then it tends to prime a lot better okay so let's prime uh, in a position where you might be able to see it hopefully that's good focus and you can see that and here we go
Okay, you see how I do that? Now when I'm spraying, I start outside the lines, outside off the figure, and I hit the figures, and then I stop the spray once I've passed the figures. Okay, again, turn 90 degrees. Be careful not to drop it. Now you could go like this. Remember not to go too excessive. Okay, we're going to turn it 90 degrees. Go again. Okay. One last spray. Okay, these guys are not fully primed, as you know. Just a little touch-ups of some areas I think I might have missed. But it's okay because I'm going to come back and do a second coat. Okay, give us a second and we'll be right back. Okay, it's been about two minutes and what we're going to do is we're going to apply another thin coat. Uh, this time with that upward angle that I was talking about. All right, so I'm going to try to get under the figures. Well, those feel like they're already dry. Dang, this Krylon primer really does dry fast. Okay, so we're going to try to get an upward angle spray. I might be getting paint on my hand, but hey, you know, that's the cost of excellent painting. And I'm being a little bit more judicious about the primer. I'm spraying directly, I'm aiming it directly at the figures. But I am still using a left and right motion so that... It doesn't just clog up on one model, you know what I mean? Try and get an upward angle. See? By raising the figures, it pretty much artificially makes me want to spray up towards the figure. Here we go. Got all of them. And remember not to spray too much or you'll get... Um, clogging or coat, the coat will be too excessive and it'll ruin your details of your model. Okay. There we go. That is super cool. I'm going to let this dry for about two minutes and then we'll be right back to kind of get some close-ups on it and take a look at it and give you some finishing words okay so now we've got um, it's been about 20 30 minutes after I primed these so you can handle them after about 10 minutes it's not a problem now when you go to when you go to paint these you're going to want to hold them by the popsicle stick okay you're gonna ho hold them by the popsicle stick when you go to do your painting uh, remember not to hold the figure so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the figures and kind of just see how well the priming had done okay so bring these up and I don't know if these are really going to focus very well all right guys so let's take a look at these figures right here uh, white looks like it primed everywhere even underneath um, I should be able to paint these pretty good let's just take a gander at the next set of bases I'm gonna look at the back side you know you're gonna to want to look to make sure everything's been primed so when you go to paint you're gonna have uh, a good amount of primer on there uh, if you discover that something was not primed okay now here's the metal figures if you discover that something was not primed you can go through and use a white uh, brush primer if you want to do that or just a white a watered down white paint uh, or it doesn't even have to be watered down but yeah just a thin coat of white paint to fill in any gaps but it looks like that Krylon did a really good job and guess what that's why I use Krylon Krylon Fusion it's got to have the fusion technology specifically okay we get some top-down looks 
behind the backpacks, the tops of the hats. These Frenchies are going to look good once they're painted. I can see this already. They didn't look so good just as plastic, but once you prime them, they really start to stand out. And it disguises any uh, glue or anything like that, you know? All right, so we got all these guys primed. Uh, the next step, I do believe, is choosing my colors. And we're going to have a video on how to choose colors. Uh, that's probably going to be the next one. Thanks for coming out and checking out this video. Look for the next one. And uh, remember, if you have any suggestions or units that you want me to paint, you go ahead and drop me a line, and I will do some painting or some model building. If you've got any terrain that you want me to build, I'll do that. Uh, coming up pretty soon, I'm going to be painting in the near future. I'm going to be doing an Umber Hulk. Uh, that's a $5 Umber Hulk, you know? Uh, and then... Oh yeah, just to let you know, um, I did get the Albion Triumphant book. Okay, that's what I'm basing all these figures on. I'll have to go through this book and kind of really uh, do a deep dive review on it for you. I haven't done that yet, so we'll do that. Um, we played our first game of Black Powder this evening. Uh, my friends came over, We or this afternoon and evening. Uh, it only took us about four or five hours to play the Freeman's Farm scenario and uh, American War of Independence. And uh, I should have videotaped that for you. I wasn't thinking. But um, yeah, the, the, the British, the British uh, won that. Uh, the Americans got slaughtered, basically. <laughs> um, but it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So yeah, I just wanted to show you that I did get the British figures as well. I'll have to do a, I'll have to do a review on these. And I also acquired a couple of generals these are or colonels colonels for the british and for the uh french that way you know i'm building up i'm slowly gradually building up my collection of black powder we really had a good time black powder seemed like it was a little bit easier than hail caesar it was a little bit more streamlined um but i hadn't really used all the rules we kind of just based it loosely on uh our Hail Caesar games uh, because they're it's pretty much the same rules with some modifications uh, and only use the rule book when we thought something was amiss and yeah it went really quick and we had a really good time everybody everybody loved it and uh, yeah we should we should do it again probably we'll probably do another one next month um, we'll see and uh, FYI uh, just to keep you up to date on the channel we are planning on or at least I'm planning on doing some more Americans and Germans, not many, but some more Americans and Germans getting ready for the Market Garden campaign book that's coming out in February or March. Uh, as soon as that comes out, we'll get a copy of that and we will um, run those games at NashCon. We're planning on going to NashCon in Nashville, Tennessee in June. Uh, and we'll run some bolt action games. I might, I might, if depending on how many of these guys I get painted, we might play like a really small uh, black powder game. People might enjoy it. All right. Thanks for coming out and checking out this video, and I'll see you next time.